So let's get into this. So these are my top five riding gear options that I think you guys need to wear. If you're new to my channel, don't be a noob, hit that subscribe button and come and join me on my journey where we'll be going on the Harley Davidson motorcycle range, doing group rides, test reviews and all that good stuff. If we think about our human structures, without going into too much of the science aspect, we are not designed to travel faster than a sprint. If you think about someone like Usain Bolt, his top speed is around 27.9 miles an hour. Can you imagine the impact of falling over at that pace? Then on top of that, we've got to think about abrasion. Imagine traveling above that speed and how what the impact would be on your skin. Now to spit you some facts, above 30 miles an hour, for every one miles an hour that you travel, you will lose a millimeter of skin. So if you're traveling at 40 miles per hour and you have a spill, then potentially you're gonna lose 10 millimeters of skin, muscle, and it's just not worth thinking of and we just do not have enough thickness to take that. So at the top of the list for my top five things that you should have is of course, the safety helmet. So this is currently my Shoei GT Air. I've had this helmet now for just over eight months. It is definitely the best helmet that I've had today. I've had a selection of Bell helmets and other off-road motorcycle helmets as well. The reason why I like this helmet especially is, firstly, is the fit. Uh, my face is quite narrow, so this style of helmet really fits that. Uh, secondly, as well as the aerodynamics, so during high wind periods, which we do get a lot of in the UK, it, the way it's set up, it stops a lot of that buffering with the aerodynamics along the side here, top of the lid. Other, other aspects is the ventilation. It's got some really good airflow. Um, so during the, the summer periods, it doesn't get too hot in there, luckily. Other things as well from a safety perspective, it's got quick release as well. So in the unfortunate event of an accident, the helmet can be removed safely from a, from a trained professional. The other thing I like about this helmet as well is that you've got the drop down visor which is nice, so during those hot sunny periods then you can have the visor open and get more air ventilation coming through. However, that's all well and good me showing you my Shoei GT Air, but actually there's lots of good helmets on the market and I know sometimes that can become quite confusing and what we tend to do is go on to uh, Facebook groups and ask other people's advice on what works and what fits well for you guys. However, I stumbled across a really good website and it's called Sharp. So Sharp is a consumer information initiative that was launched by the Department of Transport in 2007, following research that revealed real differences in the safety performance of motorcycle helmets available in the UK. So it's a really good independent provider that showcases exactly how good your helmet is in terms of um, impact levels. And what I really like about this site is that the level of testing is super duper in depth and it actually gives you a star rating on your helmet. So how did my Shoei GT Air come off against the sharp testing? The good news is that on the front and rear, according to the color code chart, it came out as a green. On the left hand side of the helmet, it came up as an orange, which is above average. However, on the right hand side, it came out as a red, which is below average. So with this helmet, overall, it's pretty good. 
However, it does have a weak spot on the right hand side. The next thing I want to talk about is the trousers. So what are you wearing on your legs to make sure that you reduce an abrasion to the maximum level possible? Now it makes me cringe thinking back to being 16 years old, being on my Kawasaki AR50 and traveling around in a pair of denim jeans and wearing a Helly Hansen jacket coupled with a pair of DC shoes. All I can say is thank gosh I never came off that bike. Today's riding, one of the things that I'm always making sure that I'm wearing is a set of Kevlar jeans. The jeans that I like to wear is from a company called Dragon Jeans, which is based in Australia, but don't worry, there's no ball fiddling going on here. As you may be able to see with the jeans, I've just turned them inside out, and the Kevlar runs from top of the backside all the way straight down to the leg into the knee area. These are the main impact areas that in the unfortunate event that you're sliding across the tarmac. With the Dragon Jeans, you do have the ability to put in some CE approved armor for the knees. This will give you some protection. From a personal perspective, I don't find it that flexible and it can be a little bit uncomfortable. However, on traveling long distances, I will put this armor in. So far today, all I've seen is positive review on Kevlar's, and yes, do you know what? They're gonna cost a couple of hundred pounds, but this versus denim, no contest. So make sure you get a pair. The next thing on my list is definitely something that's gonna keep you warm and dry, and it's one of those decisions you need to make, whether it be cowhide or textile. What I went for is your Harley Davidson cowhide jacket. Reason being for me, if I'm being bluntly honest, I quite liked it. I thought it was relatively stylish and considering I own a Harley Davidson, it kind of made sense. One of the things that I was taken back by is the price. Notably, Harley Davidson is a very expensive range. But for me, with the Harley Davidson jacket, what I liked about it is that it was gonna last a long period of time. I've bumped into loads of people that have had jackets for over five, seven, eight, coming up to 10 years. And the way I looked at purchasing this jacket is that this cost me, do not tell my wife, over 500 pounds. But over five years, that's 100 pound per year. So that is a really good investment for something that's going to keep you abrasion free and give you a very good level of protection. Nowadays, a lot of the Harley Davidson jackets for the cowhide do come with CE proved armor as well. So very similar to the Kevlar jeans, you would find that in the shoulder areas and sometimes in the back areas as well, where you can have some impacts. But overall, make sure you get yourself a really, really solid jacket. Because at the end of the day, apart from supporting you with heat, and cold, um, it's also going to have to support you against in the event of, not if you come off, it's unfortunately when you come off. The next thing that we have in my top five is again something that's to do with this. So that is the gloves. So what I've got is a pair of Alpine Star gloves. Now the reason I like these gloves is because they have lots of different features that I'll take you through. But before selecting your gloves, these are the things you need to ask yourself. The first thing is, it's about fit. So when trying on the glove, does it fit well? Does it restrict you at all? With these gloves, I've got full range of motion, and when I pinch, I can feel everything in my finger. So it's a really good fit for me. The lining also doesn't feel too thick, so much so that I'll overheat when there is some sunny conditions in the UK. Another important part is the protection aspect. So it's the construction of the gloves. Typically, what happens during an accident is that when we come off a bike, the first thing that we do is want to protect our body, our face. So the natural thing to do is to put your palm out. In view of this, what you should be looking for is a glove whereby you've got some type of either kangaroo skin or cowhide on the palm and fingers of the glove. That way it's going to stop yourself from getting some nasty abrasions as you put your hand out and touch the tarmac. Other things you want to be looking for as well is features of the gloves. So for me, what I really wanted was some windproof gloves, which these are. They're actually also waterproof as well. Um, up to a, a certain point. But these are typically gloves that I'll wear dur during the winter season of riding. And then moving into the summer season, I'll have a thinner style of glove to wear also. So last but not least of what you guys need to make sure that you're rocking is a really good riding boot. I started off with a range of shoes, notably more of your, your Dickies hardware boots approach. And then I moved into a style where I had more comfort 
more safety and a definitely more style as well. So at the moment I'm rocking the TCX Hero boot. Typically the TCX boot is your cruiser bike market. It's not going to be something that you're going to wear on a sports bike by any means. What I really like about this boot is that it looks just as cool off the bike than it does on the bike. It's got a great Italian look about it because they are made in Italy and the leather itself is really, really high quality. Typically again, with good clothing and good boots, you're gonna pay a little bit of money towards it, but it's gonna be worth it. These set you back around 180 pounds delivered to your door in the UK and it comes in a range of colors, well, two to be exact. This tan color, brown if you like, all the way through to black. From a feature perspective, the boot's waterproof. It's also got lots of protection at the toe, at the rear of the heel, and importantly, at the ankle as well. Because again, that's where sometimes some of the impacts hit you. I'm coming into my second season now with these boots, and still, they look absolutely mint. Now, there's a question around how many miles I've done on it, and it's not a lot. But I know with this style of boot and this quality, it's certainly going to last me a long, long time. So my recommendation with buying boots is that make sure it's always CE approved and that I'd always look at some review sites and just check that everyone's singing from the same hymn sheet around just how good these boots are. So those are my top five things that you guys should be rocking. I hope it's been useful and as always, please ensure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, Make sure you're subscribed and hopefully I'll catch you guys soon. All the best, safe riding, mowing you brightest.